As you guys know, we've been making some great progress on the 300ZX build. We finally have an engine in here. Actually this time. In the last couple of videos I showed my struggles putting a KA in a Z. I thought it would be a lot easier, but that's alright, we still got it done. We ended up having to notch a subframe, make some custom motor mounts, and now we're on the stage of wiring the engine into the chassis. So today I'm going to be converting my KA engine harness to fit the 300ZX chassis harness. Now I do still have the original 300ZX engine harness in here. And that's only because we couldn't get it out last time. Apparently there's a little plate you have to remove to remove it fully from the firewall, but we'll get to that later. So I'll show you the plugs that we're working with today. These are gonna be the most important ones. And these are the three main engine plugs and they attach right here. Now the KA has similar plugs, although not three, there's only two. And these are the two plugs that go onto the KA harness. So essentially this harness is gonna have to connect over here somehow. Originally on the 240 it connects on this side of the car, but we'll go through all that later. What's important right now is to figure out what pins from these two connectors I need to line up to the pins in these three connectors. Now the very first thing I notice is that this brown plug actually fits in here. No problem. Only one out of the eight pins is in the correct location. And you're probably wondering how I figured that out. Well the very first thing I did was grab the sheet of paper and wrote down every single pin color on each connector and labeled it. So for example, I have the 300ZX stuff on top, 240 stuff on the bottom. I started with just drawing out the pins, labeling them. Also, I made sure to write the back view so that way when you're looking at the connector, it's in this order. See how green is on the top left? Versus if you look at it this way, green would be on the top right. So that's very important. And then once I drew the connectors, I labeled each pin and then wrote down what color each wire was. And then I spent hours looking through forums and electrical diagrams to try and find out any information on what these wires actually go to. It sounds very easy to find a diagram, but the thing is this is a connector within a diagram. This isn't the end point. Basically what that means is I had to trace every single wire color, find out where it starts from, where it goes, and what it goes through. So once I figured that out, I wrote down a brief description on what the wire does. And then I did that for the 240 as well. So now what I'm doing is comparing the 240 KA harness to the 300ZX VG harness. I'm trying to find any similarities between the two and so far I have come up with quite a few. I may or may not have enough connections to get the engine started right away. So before I go chopping up my harness, I'm going to back probe each wire and jump it to the Z. But before I even do that, I'm going to plug a battery into the Z and just make sure the car works as it should. Basically I'll you know try and roll the windows down try and turn the ignition on, see if the lights work on the cluster. That way we know the chassis is good before we start messing around with the engine harness. And we're gonna have to grab the battery out of the work truck. Well, we got the battery in there, but I'm realizing this car doesn't even have terminals. But the KA harness that I have does have terminals. For example, this was off of the Junkyard KA, which is attached to the transmission harness. So I might just separate this from the KA harness for now because the starter and battery locations are in different spots on these cars. For example, the 240 battery is right here, which is why this only goes here. But on this car, battery positive is right here and the starter is right below it. And then we'll just get it ground, ground it from the battery to the firewall and then from the firewall to the engine itself. And a lot of these connectors are for an automatic S13, so I won't be needing them. But these larger connectors, I believe, are for the alternator. We're not going to worry about that today. We just need to get the engine started. Positive terminal came off very nicely and it's still got the original fitting on there for the starter. Now I want to clean up some of the stuff in here because I can't get to the wiring down here. I believe this single pin connector is the starter signal. So we're gonna need that as well, obviously to get the car started. And there's also cruise control and whatever this is in the way. So we're just gonna do some quick deletes on the car. Like this air ducting, we don't need that right now. All this piping in here, I need to get in here, so. The bay feels like it has so much more room already. I probably should have deleted most of this stuff before we went about putting the engine in there. And another thing is this little wire has to go to the positive terminal, which I just realized this battery is in backwards. The positive is supposed to be on this side. And this will still be long enough to reach the starter and the positive. Obviously that's negative right now, so I'm not going to connect it. But unfortunately my car did not come with the other end of these plugs, which I think are the main power plugs. The transmission harness on 90s Nissans usually includes the battery alternator and starter in it. So we're gonna have to try and make something work here. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the starter wire to the starter, which this is a KA starter wire, so hopefully it even fits on here. Man, that's so close to the firewall. 
The nice thing here is there's no exhaust manifold in the way like there would be if this was a VG. We've got a few things hooked up here. So it was my mistake not to bring a negative terminal here. So we ended up finding an old Integra positive harness, which yes, is red, but it's on the negative. So it is negative just because it's red doesn't mean it's positive. And we also have a red ground wire here that goes from the firewall to the engine. And the terminal from the battery goes directly to the firewall. Everything will be nicely grounded. Now there was one power wire that was coming up from this mini fuse box area. So I attach that to the KA positive terminal. So I can probably hook this up now and see what happens. Well, here's something. No major sparks, so I think we're good to test fit this for now. And yes, this is vice script because I tried to tighten this terminal and it broke off. It is what it is. Let's see what the car does. It's got some power. Again, we don't have these powered up yet because I don't have the other side of this connector. The windows work. Oh my gosh. Do the lights work? Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, the high beams are on. There we go. Oh, that's a wiper. Looks like the digital thing here doesn't light up. Oh, turn that off. Oh my God. Blowing out dust. <laughs> it's alive, the car works. Well, not alive alive, but enough. Dang it, how do you turn down the speed of this? The screen doesn't work, so I don't know like how fast it's going out. <laughs> it's just going faster and faster. Oh, what? That's how you turn it off? That's pretty nifty. You're gonna have to learn how to use this car. That's pretty neat. Is this fog lights? What is this? Yep. Let's continue on. I'm gonna take out the key for now, just so we don't have ignition on. Security system going off. Someone's breaking in. Oh, there's a light on it here? This one too. Is that just because the door's open? Yeah, it has to be. The well, no, it actually has the lights on. Are they off now? Yeah. Oh, so the beep's just for the lights being on. I want to see the taillights, actually. Oh, yeah, those are so dim. Well, it is daylight, so. <laughs> Hazards work? Oh, yeah. The brake lights do work really nice. That's a great start. Something works on this car. Interesting hazard button. Forgot to bring oil, but luckily there's a bunch of Hondas at this house. So you know we have some on deck. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. I'll have to get you another jug or so. Just want to put the oil in it before I get ahead of myself and forget to put it in later. Can't forget to put the filter on. <laughs> and we did fill this filter about halfway with oil. I want to verify all the voltages that I have written down on here on each pin. So basically what I'm doing is grabbing the multimeter, setting it to voltage, grabbing a lead and touching each pin inside of these three connectors. And I'll have the ground side, which I was using this motor bracket here since it's bare and it's a good ground. Then after I complete this step, I'm going to turn the ignition on and then check all the pins again just to verify the operation during ignition on. Then I will go about jumping the 240KA pins into the 300ZX body pins. This is gonna look a little crazy. That's because it is. We've gotten to the point where most of the pins are jumped that I believe are necessary for starting the car. Some of the diagrams are very unclear as to which pin does what exactly. We may have to chase a problem later, but I have it set up in a way, but I have it set up in a way where we can just make minor adjustments along the way. They're all jumped in there very nicely. Then we have T-pins back probing and then pin inserts on the front. And I thought I had a coupler for the intake, but I do not. So we're trying to make this big coupler work. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit on the intake too well. And now for the biggest issue is I thought I had the correct ECU, but for some reason, this is not the right ECU. I thought this was the same KA ECU that I pulled from the junkyard that was attached to this harness. If you look at the connector, it's way shorter than the ECU. How? What the heck? Can someone confirm if a 24 Nissan ECU is an auto KA? I do not know, but I do know that that's not gonna work for us. So we're gonna have to figure that out. As for the signal for the starter, I was looking around in my Integra, cause I have my wiring stuff in there, and I found this old connector for my 240. And this is actually the 240 starter connector. So you won't believe this, but it fits in the Z. Look at that, meant to be. So I will just slide this onto the starter. I will probably have to go under there and do that because I cannot reach it. And also for temporary, we have the fuel lines hooked up and they loop over the top. Eventually I want to make it so the fuel lines come out 
of the passenger side that way it's not on the exhaust side or maybe i'll have it run along the top i don't know we'll figure something out this is definitely not going to be permanent but just to get started i think i'm just going to crank over and see if the starting system works and then go on a parts run should probably neutral check but <laughs> there we go all right here we go nothing i think we have to bypass the neutral safety switch so let's find out where that is <laughs> apparently there is a starter control relay thing behind this panel hmm. anyone home ah there it is this little guy interesting place to have this Oh, well, I was trying to take the connector off, but that works. Apparently you have to jump these two, which makes sense because this is the color of the starter signal wire, black with a yellow stripe. So we have this little jumper. We'll slide it in. All right, let's try that out. <laughs> Make sure nothing blows up in there. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but I definitely heard something knocking. I don't know if that's the engine itself or if the crank is now hitting the oil pan. I made a rookie mistake here and didn't spin the crank after I massaged the oil pan. So basically what that means is I'm either going to restart this build completely with maybe a 240 subframe or maybe make a custom pan. But either way, the engine has to come out and we have to verify that the oil pan is still good. I know I said I was going on a Z parts run, but actually my new friend Caden brought my parts all the way from where? Hour north of Indy. Hour north of Indy. How far was your drive? About four and a half hours. <sighs> Fancy little place where James Dean's from. Oh, now. is he really? Yeah, he actually ended up bringing the quarter glass window, which I've been looking for. A new shift linkage because mine snapped all the bolts. And the drive shaft, which I actually did not have. I thought I had one, but it was for an automatic, which was too short. And you have a YouTube channel you're starting too, right? I started it last year. Nedex Nostrap. N-E-D-A-C. S-N-O-S R-A-P. Oh, Caden yeah. Parsons backwards if you have troubles. Dude, thank you. It's nice to meet you as oh, well. Dude, sick meeting you too, dude. Another Can't... fellow Z enthusiast. Oh, for sure. And I'm sure we'll meet again. Oh, definitely. This is not the last time. How many Z's do you have? You said you had a bunch, right? Got five and a half. <laughs> you know, just a casual half chilling. <laughs> Recently, Franzi has been driving the four-door work truck and she said that it started bogging out on her. And I suspect that it's either due for a tune-up or the distributor is going out. And this is an aftermarket distributor, so it is a lot more common to go out versus an OEM one. Plus, I know this engine burns a lot of oil, so the spark plugs could be fouled out. So I decided to replace both. I'm curious to see what these spark plugs look like. Hang these over the side. Oh, and we have some oil on the bottoms. Man, I just replaced this valve cover gasket. How is that leaking already? Whew. That is not looking good. Hold it. Cylinder two. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Full of oil. Cylinder three. Whew. Also full of oil and cylinder four. Whew. Okay, so these definitely need to be replaced. Or at least getting the oil out of these spark plug socket walls. All right, we got new plugs in there. Drop these back in. Next, we need to take off the distributor, which I'm going to leave these wires connected so that I can transfer them over to the new distributor and not have to guess which one goes where. Also, it's important to remember how far advanced distributor is before you take it off. And these are usually advanced all the way when you run a B20 on a B18 ECU. Now, usually you'd have to remember where you had your pin set for other cars or set it to top dead center on cylinder one. But luckily, this is a Honda. So all you have to do is spin this knob to match the camshaft. 
which that is coated in oil so I'm gonna clean that out really quick okay it'll only go on one way boom seated so now I'm gonna bolt this in first I left them somewhat loose that way we can still adjust the timing on the distributor itself you can see that's how you adjust it but we're gonna start it on the fully advanced setting because that's where this one was so now I'm gonna switch over each plug wire one at a time just so I know that they're going in the correct spot we're done with this now we're ready for a test start Yay! <laughs> Neutral check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to address this soon, hopefully. <laughs> Neutral check. Hey, fired right up. Well, let me go close the hood and we'll take it for a rip. All right, let's see what this baby's got. We'll just tighten these up because we know this is the correct location. Well, last but not least, don't forget to write down what you did. Date, mileage, what you did. Hopefully soon we'll have more progress updates on her 240. We actually need to start looking into a new turbo on it because it's on its way out. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and I'll see you guys next time. Get that fucking done.